There are many conversations that can be had on the topic of money. Probably the two most common are how to make more and how to spend less, and neither are unimportant. But there's more to money than simple ones and zeros. There's also the effect that it has on our lives and our psyche, both positively and negatively, as well as how it impacts the way we live. According to the Things That Matter survey, 69% of Americans say their desire for acquiring more money influences their daily decisions. So how we think about money matters. With that in mind, I thought it would be helpful, both personally and corporately, to talk about the seven quotes about money that shaped my view of it, or at least the seven quotes that have been the most impactful over the last 10 years of my life. So here they are. Seven quotes that forever changed my view of money. Number one, 90% of Americans experience financial related stress. This statistic, without a doubt, was the first one to send me into deeper thinking about the topic of money. I remember reading the quote and thinking immediately, America is the wealthiest nation in the history of the world, and yet 90% of us are still stressed about money? How can this be? Certainly, just like in every society, there are some people who don't have enough, but that number is not 90%. It's not even close to 90%. So why are nine out of every 10 people in the wealthiest country in the world stressed about money? It's not because they don't have enough. There must be other reasons. Probably because we keep looking to money to provide something it's never able to provide. Quote number two, too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Will Rogers. If you've been reading about minimalism or owning less for any period of time, you've likely seen this quote. It was one of the earliest mind-shifting realizations that I read as my family began owning less. The connection between consumer debt or not being able to get ahead financially is closely tied to our spending habits. And Will Rogers drives home that connection quite succinctly with that powerful thought. Quote number three, you say, if I had a little more, I would be satisfied. You make a mistake. If you are not content with what you have, you would not be satisfied if it were doubled. Charles Spurgeon. I first read this quote early in my journey to minimalism and immediately applied it to physical possessions. Our life's discontent is evidenced in our excess possessions. Why else would we continue to purchase and accumulate things that we don't need unless we're trying to satisfy some level of discontent in our lives, believing that that next purchase will bring happiness, comfort, or luxury? I could recognize that Spurgeon was right. If I was not content with the physical possessions that I owned, which were already well above most people in the world, why would I think owning more would somehow result in contentment? Quickly, I began to recognize this thought could equally be applied to money. Is there a magic number where we suddenly become content because we have enough money? I certainly haven't found that to be the case as I look at my own life and the lives of others. Quote number four, Money won't make you happy, but everyone wants to find out for themselves. Zig Ziglar. There's a similar quote by Jim Carrey that I occasionally post on social media that goes like this. I wish everyone could get rich and famous so they can see that's not the answer. Whenever I post the quote, it's immediately met by a thousand similar sounding replies that go like this. Well, that's easy for Jim Carrey to say he's worth $200 million. Of course, the only people who could tell us that money isn't the answer is someone who has achieved money. And the only people who can tell us that money won't make us happy is someone who has acquired money. But just like Zig Ziglar said, everybody wants to find out for themselves. Wise is the man or woman who can recognize money won't make you happy before wasting their entire lives trying to get it. Quote number five, 87% of millionaires admit they do not feel wealthy. 
This is an updated version of a stat that was first included in a survey done of the ultra wealthy in the Atlantic called Secret Fears of the Super Rich. I've always appreciated the analysis included in that survey as it speaks of some of the drawbacks of wealth in a person's life. I'll include a link to the article in the description below. But that one stat that 87% of millionaires don't feel wealthy more than anything else in the study changed my view of money. Whenever people tell me they need more money to be happy or feel secure, I ask them for the specific number that will allow them to feel secure. And nobody knows what that number is. Everyone just assumes it's more than they had. A word of warning here, if you think there's a number out there of income or net worth that will make you finally feel secure, you'll never achieve it. At the very least, it's well above a million dollars because most millionaires are still looking for that number. Quote number six, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Paul the Apostle. Nobody admits to loving money. Everybody just wants more of it. If I were to ask a room full of people, how many of you love money? Very few hands would go up. We all know what the love of money results in. But if I were to ask how many of you want to be rich, almost every hand in the room would go up. Why not? We think to ourselves, obviously, I'd like to be rich. The problem is that this desire affects our daily decisions more than we realize. We begin sacrificing pursuits of greater meaning and significance because of our desire to be rich, never seeing a problem with it. But traps are subtle and we don't often realize we've fallen into one until it's too late. Quote number seven, money often costs too much. Ralph Waldo Emerson. In the end, this quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson begins to summarize many of my thoughts on money these days. Is money evil in itself? No. But our desire for it often costs us more than we think. And its negative effects on our lives, when we do obtain it, are often understated and overlooked. Now, this is not to say that we shouldn't be working hard to provide for our families. Certainly that is the case nor does it mean that we turn down honest compensation. But too often, our desire to accumulate money costs us more than we think, especially when it never returns the personal benefits we think it will. You can never have enough of what won't satisfy.